Today's lesson brings Larry South to a small reservoir near Texarkana, Texas. Topwater fishing can be both exciting and frustrating. Let's join Larry as he shares some of his secrets in today's lesson, Topwater Grass and Pad Action. You know, I did something there that uh, a lot of times will cause you to miss the fish. Jerk too fast. When you're fishing topwater baits, you gotta wait till they pull your cork under. But that first strike, you always have a tendency to just, poof, when he hits it, you wanna jerk it away from him. But I got lucky then, and he got a hold of it, so I didn't miss the fish. You got to train yourself as you, as you get to be a older, more experienced fisherman. You've got to learn that many times it's better to let them grab it and pull it down and then set the hook than it is to just get excited and jerk on the initial strike. One of the most common mistakes made when fishing a topwater bait is setting the hook immediately upon seeing the strike. Don't set the hook until you see your bait disappear under the water. This will definitely increase your percentage of hookups. Got him. Come here, little feller. Yeah, he kind of liked that thing. Oh, I love it when they bite topwater plugs. No, he's not a real big one. I think that's what got me hooked on bass fishing more than anything else, is watching fish come up and hit something on the surface. Now, there ought to be a giant living in there somewhere. See, this is the type of cover right here. When you've got these old floating mats like this, there's not a whole lot of lures that you can fish in it real effectively. See how that thing just comes right through that grass? You gotta have baits like the popping frog that are designed to fish around and through and over heavy grass. That's just a part of bass fishing. I mean, you want something that you're not afraid. If you see a little pothole way over in the grass, that you're not afraid to throw it in. And normally, early in the morning, normally, most of your bass will be on the outer edge. I mean, they're going to be around the edge of it feeding. And then when they quit biting and you think there's no more fish around there, that's when they bury under it. Sometimes you can come back and take this thing and throw right up on top of them mats and just pop it across the top of them mats and your fish will be completely under it, right where, I mean, you'd think a bass couldn't even get. Another small fish, but a lot of fun, a lot of fun, not too bad, long little skinny bass, where's your mama at? <laughs> oh, I'm in a lot of little ones, but little ones are fun too, you gotta catch little ones to learn how to catch big ones. And they're getting it pretty good. I've seen days, I mean, this happens everywhere. There are certain days that go by and you think, I mean, boy, it's good, I'm catching every fish that strikes, and then another day will come right around, 
and you can't hook a bass on a bait like this. A spoon, uh, it's just it's something about the way the fish are taking the bait. So that is part of this type of fishing, is missing fish. Now some days you're going to catch them all, other days you're going to miss a lot of them. So it's just one of them things that you have to deal with. I love fishing vegetation. You know, weeds, that's a fisherman's nightmare. Most people, I, I'm not going to say most people, but a lot of people just hate fishing vegetation for some reason. I think it's because their lures stay clogged up and they really don't know how to deal with it. But that's why they make lures like the popping frog. You just have to follow it with your trolling motor, stay away from it and stay out of all this junk, keep your big motor out of it and kind of work your way in and out wherever you can get because that's people's biggest headache is, is their equipment, you know, wadding up in the grass and their trolling motor stays clogged up. You get your big engine hot and there's a lot of different things that we do to, to make fishing vegetation easier. And one of them is trim your motor up when you're in the grass. If you get clogged up on your big engine back there, you take and put it in reverse and kick that grass off. But lure selection is the critical thing in fishing vegetation. Find one that'll work the cover and the portion of the, the grass that the fish are in. When fishing vegetation, lure selection is very important. Choose a weedless bait that can be worked through or over the cover you are fishing. Come here. See, I got that and hooked up twice. Got him on the main hook and with the trailer hook. He's not bad. Nice little fish, I thank you. You know, so many of our lakes, I don't care whether they're big man-made lakes or small reservoirs, they have a lot of this, this underwater vegetation. And, you know, the way I do that grass is I kind of read it like I would a, a shoreline. You try to, try to see where it's real tall like that and then follow the, just follow the, follow the edges of it just like you would a bank. I mean, that's, won't even let me talk. Baby bass. Come here. Now just follow them edges of that uh, of them grass lines and just kind of make your casts accordingly and follow it and just pitch down the edge of it. And because so many times, I mean, a bass use them. They use them edges just like uh, uh, like their highways. If you don't follow that edge, you know, I've always said, edge is the whole key to bass fishing. When fishing visible underwater vegetation, try to find the edge and follow it, working the edge thoroughly with your bait. Remember, edges are the key to bass fishing. Buried up in them weeds on me. That's another good one on that. Good frog bass. See how you got that old dark, weedy tan? Been under that heavy grass? That's the kind that comes up and meets that popping frog. And now, here's an important Nixon note, courtesy of Bomber Baits and Riverside Lure. You know, one of the most aggravating things about fishing crankbaits is when you get your favorite plug hung, then you have to get your plug knocker and untangle it and drop it down there and knock your bait loose and wind it back up or you, you get your hooks all tangled up in it. Get you an anchor rein and put it on your boat. 
besides being useful to tie up to docks and anchor, put your plug knocker on it when you crankbait fishing, then you just hook your line in there, drop it down there, knock your plug loose, pull it back up, and it pulls the rope right back down in the boat, and it's out of your way, and you can get back to fish. And now, here's another important Nixon note, courtesy of Mustad, makers of the revolutionary new triple grip treble hook. Anytime that you're crankbait fishing and you're having a problem hooking fish, maybe they're pushing it at you, hitting it from the side, and just not taking the bait right. Cold water, that is a time when that is a big problem. They just don't get it in their mouth good. If you remove the back hook from your crankbait, take that little small treble off and put on a treble hook that's got a little more shank on it. Now don't get a hook that's big and heavy and messes up the action of your crankbait. Just a little bit longer shank gives you a little more reach and a lot of times when he comes up there and nips at the back end of it, he'll catch one of them hooks and you'll land him. Shade. You know, that's one thing that you got to watch for is, as you learn more about, and you get better. A lot of times, the whole key would be following the shade. Sun gets straight up, fish quit biting. Then, then when it starts settling down, getting behind the trees, just move over to the shady bank. Not always the answer, but it can be. So much of topwater fishing depends on the time of day and the conditions that you've got. And one thing that I found in a lot of lakes is if you've got a lot of shallow water, if the lake that you're fishing is basically all shallow and slightly off-colored, you're subject to catch bass on a topwater plug all day long, so don't be afraid to throw it. Now, clear water lakes, that's a totally different story because it, uh, it may be just one hour in the morning and one hour in the evening and the rest of the rest of the day you're wasting your time unless they're busting the surface on shad. Now if they're schooling on shad, then you can catch them on top. When fishing topwater baits, time of day can be one of the most important keys. In shallow water lakes with slightly off-colored water, you may catch fish on topwater all day long. However, in clear water lakes, you may only catch fish on topwater for a brief period in the early morning and again in the late afternoon. Jaws. He is a pretty good one. I thought you was a moose when you come up and got my frog. Not too bad. Yeah, he was right down in the heavy lilies. Come right out of a little hole in the lily pads. Now see, I, I think that is the kind of stuff that a lot of bass get in, and you can't catch them. I mean, they just go back in that stuff and bury up back in there, and until they're ready to eat and come out, you just can't hardly catch them. They're extremely hard to fish because it makes such a solid mat on the surface. I believe I have people ask me that question about as much as any question that I get asked, is how do you fish heavy mats of lily pads? And the only thing you can do is throw a popping frog or a rat or a, a spoon and do the best you can to get it in what little holes that you can get it in. Because it's like, if you tried to flip all that, it's like flipping a jungle. You know, if it had a definite edge and isolated pads, isolated little clumps, now you can flip that. But when you take a sea of lilies like that, that is an extremely hard place to fish. The only thing you can do is work the edges and cast over into any little holes that you can see 
and use a real weedless bait and keep your fingers crossed. You know, there isn't a lure that has treble hooks on it that can be fished around this type of stuff. I mean, you've got to have a weedless bait. It's fixing to be bad around here. We're gonna have to make a move here pretty shortly. A nice thunder boomer fixing to come in. Had the fish are biting good for a few minutes and then bam, they just quit. Well, folks! It's here and we gotta go! It's a bad one, about to blow me off the deck of this boat. Hope you've enjoyed the show today. Come back and see me again next week. I'll teach you how to be a better bass fisherman.